So welcome to another edition of Interruptions. My next guest is one of the founding members of the group in Vogue, as well as she went on to go on and do some great work in another group called Lucy Pearl. I'm talking about the beautiful <laughs> and the exquisite Don Robinson. How you doing, Don? Ah, uh, nice, nice introduction. Thank you, <laughs> no problem. No problem. I am great. How are you? I'm doing well. We call the show interruption because uh, what we're trying to do is interrupt that thought process of what people think is real or not real, just depending on what the topic is. So of exactly. course, of I course, today it. the topic is you. So what we're going to do, yes. we want to interrupt people's thought process. Uh, yes, and I am I'm I'm an interrupter, so it's perfect. <laughs> I'm a rebel. Yes, I am. I'm an interrupter. Yeah. Well, perfect. once again, thank you for blessing us with your presence and your and uh coming on the show today. My first well, question thank you for having me. Oh, no problem. Listen, listen. <laughs> hey, back in the day, uh, Keith, this one is for you. It was my best friend. <laughs> hey Keith. The, 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 hey Keith. The, the when you guys first came out right yes that iconic uh first album cover and every every you know guys are like uh this one mine this one mine this one mine <laughs> and we looked at you myself keith uh lavoris of course he's happily married now but okay Lavoris, ev yeah. everybody was like Don, you were the one. So you, you, oh listen, you, yeah, wow. you were the, all you got, all of you were beautiful, of course. Exactly. Uh, sure. But you they were the are. one that Thank you me. had that look like, see, see, I just need, oh to, my get God. To, I just need <laughs> to get to where she is. That's all we need to do. Oh my God. <laughs> that is so funny. Thank you for that. That is no like, problem. Wow. No problem. I appreciate that in a big way. We, we knew that we all had our own fan base. So it was like each one of us had, you know, fans that loved each sure. one of us. But for you three, that's so cool. I oh, yeah. And, and you listen, <laughs> what was funny, what's funny about that is we all, we, it was my, uh, my brothers, they're like my brothers. Uh, yes. We, if, if you ever meet all three of us, we're totally different from each other. Mm, wow, Person, but you still have the same taste. Yeah. Person, <laughs> but, but normally, in, even tasting what we just, we're, we're like totally different. I don't even know how we're wow. friends. I don't, seriously, I'm oh glad goodness. we are. I'm glad we yes. are, but we're just so different from each other. <laughs> totally opposite of each other. Yeah. yeah. But you know, I think my best friend and I are too. I'm glad we have similar mindsets on certain things. Sure. But she's her own person and has been since high school and so have I. So that's what makes the world go round. That'll the fact work. that you guys all picked the same woman in the group. Yeah. That was super cool. Yeah. Super so, cool. How did Invo come together? How did how did Invo come about? Oh my goodness! Well, the story is has been told a billion times. I had um, to start there. Have, that's okay. That's all right. I'm good because you know I tell people all the time too. They're like, "Well, I know you've heard this question over and over again." I'm like, "Yeah, but a lot of the fans have not." Yeah. So your fan base may not have known this, so I'm just gonna go through it. Um. We, uh, our producers were doing an audition. They had a uh, five act deal from Atlantic Records. Sylvia Roan gave them um, f funding to put together five acts. Okay. One of the acts was a girl and guy um, duo rap team called To Be Continued, which I love that title, that okay. name. Yeah, I like that. Uh, there was exactly right, To Be Continued. Um, and To Be to Continued. Continu yeah. Um, and then there was a female solo female R&B, solo male R&B, then us as a group, and then someone else. I forgot. They had five acts. Okay. Out of those five acts, we were the only ones that succeeded. But I digress. So I was at an, uh, I was at a, um, at an all-day concert called Summer Jam in the Bay Area. Okay. Oakland, Bay okay. Area. Uh, every year, probably the three years prior to graduating high school, um, and then two years after high school, my friend and I would always go to the summer jam. Okay. And we would always get the best seats. Once I graduated high school, I could get better seats because my mom was paying before that. <laughs> but when I had a job, I had a job. I was like, well, let's get VIP. Let's, you know. Okay. Yeah, let's, up, let's do it. Let's upgrade. <laughs> exactly. And we were there with two male friends and uh, we decided we weren't dating them or anything. So we decided right. we're going to go. Let's go and get... Um, 
let's go to the bathroom, which was code for let's go check out guys, you know, right. so it's just kind of look who's here and check everybody out because it's 22 to 25,000 people. Right. So um, there's got to be some single guys here somewhere, you know, that's how we feel. <laughs> and literally it started at, I think it started at 11 a.m. And it goes all through the night, like all mm -hmm. day long concerts. So in between each act, they would change the band. Okay. On stage, you know what I mean? Sure. So they change out all the equipment and then mm -hmm. set up for the next artist who was coming on stage. So Stevie B had left the stage or he was coming on. I still get that confused. Um, or the cover girls were leaving and coming on, which one of those was leaving and one okay. of them was coming on. So we decided to go and to the bathroom. <laughs> and when we got to the top of our section, this guy said, excuse me. And we both turned around and he said, are you a model? And I was like, whatever. Like such a weak <laughs> pickup line. That's such a weak pickup line. That is so weak. Are you kidding me? Are you a model? Like that's it? Oh, cut it okay. out. So we went to the restroom. We actually tried to go to the restroom and the line was too long. So we got some popcorn, I think a drink okay. or so. And then we came back to that section, Otis. Okay. You're talking again, 22 to 25,000 people. So there's droves of people walking around, right. talking, it's loud. There's music playing on stage, even though the artists are not on stage yet. It's just background music playing. Right. And all those people, he's still standing there. Out of all those people, he's the still standing there. The same guy. Me, same guy he said excuse me i said yes oh you're driving me crazy what is it now <laughs> and, and that was my attitude right I say that um and i said yes and he said are you uh he said i know you're not a mo i said i'm not a model he said okay but can you sing i was like oh my god can i sing oh yeah. yes so after that he had my full attention and my friend okay. stayed with me for about 20 minutes of the conversation and then she All went right. back to her seat and we stood there for about an hour and talked him okay. and I. Okay. Um, and he was like, my friends are doing an audition for a girl group. Uh, they need three girls. And I was like, okay, well, uh, he said, well, you have to come to my, my house so I can hear you sing. I was like, I will All not. Right. I will not. I don't oh, know. yeah. You got to be not. careful. Yeah, you got to be careful about that yeah. one now. Coming to the house coming now. To your, <laughs> coming to your house. Exactly. You will come to my parents' house where I live and they're there with me so I can, they can protect me if anything crazy pops off. And right. he came to our house maybe about three days later and um, heard me. And yes, he was like, I did uh, Caught Up in the Rapture by Anita Baker and okay. Been So Long. Been So Long by Anita Baker. He was like, yes, you can sing. You got it. You got, you know. And then um, probably about a week later, we had the audition. And uh, when I walked in, Cindy was there. She was the first girl there. But Denny and Tommy okay. met me in the hallway. Okay. And they were like, hey, so what's your name? And I was like, Dawn. He said, oh, we heard about you. Um, JR sent you, right? And I said, yes, JR met me at, an, at a concert, told me to come here. And I'm, I'm nervous. And they were like, it's okay. Come on in. So they were really, they put our minds at ease right away. But they, no matter how much they were kind to us right. or to me and my sister. Mm hmm uh, my sister's the one that brought me there. No matter how kind they were and how much they tried to put me at ease, I was still super, super nervous. Super, yeah. Yeah, because this is my first audition ever. Now, when I got inside, Cindy was already there. To this mm. day, Cindy is extremely prompt. If she's not early, she's right on time. Gotcha. Not a minute late. Yes, yeah, Cindy's very. I'm the same <laughs> way. I'm the same way. Are you? Oh, you're good. I'm not. I'm not that. I'm too lazy. It's it's no excuse at all. I'm just lazy and I don't get there on time. Um, but Cindy was there and as we talked and got to know each other, she's like, I was Miss, I, uh, I was Miss Oakland. I won Miss Oakland pageant and I tried out for Miss California and I did all this and I was a child star at 12. I had my own show called Up and Coming and it was a, it was a uh, well-to-do television show and I okay. was like, I, I just kept getting more intimidated as she kept talking. Right. I didn't want to be there, Otis. I was I was trying to, from that moment, I was like telling my sister, can we go home now? Can we leave now? And she kept saying, no, we can't. No, we will not. You're going to be here. You're going to do this. Yeah. So I don't know if I answered your question or not. No, you but... did. I was just asking you how the group came about. So, yeah. Yeah, that talk. was it. Yeah, yeah. That's uh, how the group... So this is where now uh, you probably, uh, I don't know, you've done so many interviews, but hopefully That's this, right. is, this is where the, uh, we will, the interview will turn and we'll have more of a conversation. So, okay. uh, 
when when in vogue started to blow up when you guys were you know just killing it you know you were everywhere right yes. and, and everybody wanted a piece of in vogue it was you know you guys were it, doing doing it all what was the energy like for you you know the, oh. the, at that time and just moving and what what was that like for you <laughs> I have relived all of these moments in my mind. For one, I'm doing my book right now. I'm writing my okay. autobiographical book. Okay. So I'm going back in my mind to those moments, but every single interview I do as well takes me back to those moments. Sure. So I, it's really wonderful to relive all that stuff. I feel like it was a fantasy life almost. It was, the one thing that you want, uh, any record company will tell you, any major label will tell you, Okay. The one thing that they want, or any product, really, I consider as a product, you mm -hmm. know? Yeah. Any record label or any company will say the same thing about their product. You want that product to be successful. You want that product to find a fan base and that people believe in that product and they buy that product, they buy into that brand or whatever that brand is. Right. And so to be wanted and desired and requested around the world. I mean, our song took off before we even got a chance to catch up with Hold On. It was out there. Right, yeah. It was global. It took off on, uh, it, it became a life of its own. Um, the record company did, really didn't love it. Sylvia Rohn wasn't loving the song. So Denny and Tommy, our producers actually, I heard that they came out of pocket and they actually funded the song. Oh, wow. Um, yeah, can you imagine? Because Hold On, to, li to listen to it to this day, it's like, it was so genius. It was so genius to have a song that was a cappella in the beginning. Yeah. It takes up what is that about? It's about I would say 20 seconds of the song. For radio, yeah. a song is typically three minutes and twenty-eight seconds, about that, around that. Well, hold on now. Minutes. Hold on now, but not back, not when you guys came out. You remember songs when you guys came you out. Think? So, they were longer. Yeah. Well, about that, that that time frame, or they could be longer. I mean, think about right. when you heard think about when you heard Parliament Flashlight on the radio. Well, and not <laughs> only that, but that was the seventies. But Flashlight was super long, and so was um, um, Donna Summer's song. I feel love. I feel love. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I feel love. I mean, sometimes you would have a four minute song. I'm saying they weren't, yeah, it, it, it was right. more if it was a hit, if it is yeah. a hit, we'll play it. Now we'll you're right, them, they're more conscious of how long, how long is the song? Well, the, what do you call them? The, um, the radio MDs, not mm -hmm. music director. Yeah, uh, the, the MDs at the radio station, yeah. program PDs, right. Mm -hmm. um, they don't, they have to get the money. So they have to take, they have to, they don't allow DJs to do their own thing like they used to. Like Frankie Crocker would play a song all day long. Right. He was doing his own thing in New York City on WBLS because he could. Um, but today it's like about money. So you got to get those advertisements in. So you have to cut the song to three minutes and 28 yep. seconds, you know. So to, to take a 20, to take, I don't even know how long um, Who's Loving You is, but to have that acapella on the radio and it's like, who the hell is that? Oh my God, where did they come from? Who are these women? Like, what? Is this a female or is this a group? Who, you know, nobody knew right. who that was. We were, we were so different and so innovative yeah. um, with that. Yeah, right. So that's why the record company didn't get behind us because they didn't like the song. They didn't believe in it. So they weren't willing to put up a lot of money at first. And I think wow. that any label that puts out an artist, they don't know if you're going to sink or swim. So they really don't invest a lot of money and a lot of time into you. They're just like, okay, put a little okay. makeup on them and put them out there. Wow. Or put this guy out there and let him play yeah. his guitar. We don't care if he makes it or not. If you make it, then everybody wants to be behind you and say that they knew you were going to make it all. Right, right. right. <laughs> That's when the <laughs> lies they, come. <laughs> put their hand on your shoulder like, oh, we knew all along that you, no, you did not. You had no idea and you didn't believe in us at all. So yeah, our producers really got behind us and made sure that that song, and we got on the road and pushed it even further yes. to do all of our promo tours. And then we we introduced to our fan, ourselves to our fans one-on-one. -on -one. So doing a promo tour, it's like you go to each city and you do right. every little club in right. every little city around the world. And you just like, hey, this is involved. This is who we are. And the fans were with us. So... That's a but you guys, thing. well, beautiful. you guys will package well. Um, you're, you're, you you yeah, all you. look, you all look, 
and that segues into my next question for you, which is okay. No, no, it does because I want to yeah. know because I'm a guy, right? Right. And so I, like I said, hey, it was like hey, is it done, or somebody was like, oh, Cindy, or <laughs> uh -huh. you know. So how did you guys navigate? through being hit on in your prime because mm. because you guys were i mean different shapes different size but sure, all, yeah. all 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 beautiful have your own unique look right Thank and you. so yeah. if you got if you have the fans guy fans loving you i know right. you had people in the industry shooting their shot so how did you how did you how did you navigate through that it's really funny otis you would think that we would have all of that um i just watched an old interview of us and we literally were talking about i think it was with uh with either sherry carter shirley carter sherry carter from um bt BT, yeah exactly either sherry was asking that question and we were like you know what we're so busy and we have a lot we were protected because we were girls so we had a lot okay. of security around us so guys couldn't just approach us and say hey what's up well, okay they couldn't just do that with us. And I think they were also, even when they had, you're at an industry function, you're backstage, mm -hmm. you're talking to all these celebrities, even when they had the chance to do that, I think they were too shy to approach us because um, they didn't know if we were gonna shoot them down or if our our uh, our security guards were gonna choke them out. <laughs> you know, <laughs> yeah okay do it from over there you know what i mean oh um, wow so we didn't have a lot of that i wish we did i wish i always look back at uh, different celebrities who dated celebrities and i'm like okay mm -hmm. Usher, Usher was too young but uh you know cherry uh chili didn't have a problem dating him when he was younger you know what i mean so right, right. things like that and we didn't i think we were too sheltered I really do. Okay. I think we okay. were too sheltered. So we would be in our dressing rooms. We didn't really socialize. I was probably the only one um, after an award show that would go back to the party. Okay. And then security would stay with me. And then the rest of security would take the other girls to their room or back to the mm -hmm. hotel. And then the car would come back and get me. But even that, it was like, okay, I don't want to be here by myself. So I would pretty much leave right. maybe 20 minutes after them because I'm like, okay, I can dance by myself, but that's not fun. That's you know, so, well, it's yeah. kind of refreshing to hear that you 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 all were protected because you know sometimes uh you like you say you may go the hardest thing for guys to understand sometimes is yeah. that yes you want to uh at that time you know you want to go out party a little bit but that doesn't necessarily mean it's it's got to lead to something else you exactly. know where where at now I right. will I will say this as you remember in that time. <laughs> It was all about getting the phone number first. You know, you you, you know, yes. you had your little pen, had your little pen and paper ready. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> see, now they, they get to cheat because you know you just put it in the cell phone or you know the cell phone, exactly. But see, but see, you guys got to give the wrong number and the guy wouldn't know it's the wrong number. He wouldn't uh, know it back then. Until, now you can uh, call somebody right away. Like, let me call you so you let me call you right This ain't exactly. the right number. Yeah. <laughs> You better run away before he actually calls you. So if it's yeah. not the right number, he don't know yeah. it. He can't find yeah. you and check and call you on it. Yeah, it's like, yeah, you're absolutely right. It took a lot of guts for you guys to approach us back then. Just women in general. Yeah, what's well, yeah. the dating yeah. thing? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, I tell you, I tell you what. I, once, once for me, once mm -hmm. um, <laughs> Michael Jordan came out and Wesley Snipes. You know, I was good because I was like, okay, the dog scan brothers, we in, you know. Exactly. So, so, so then my thing was, listen, Doug, listen, I, I had got so cocky, right? Uh, by uh -huh. the time, by the time I would say uh, 1920, right, 20 right. years of age, I could have met all you guys at a concert or industry thing. And uh -huh. my, th my thing was, look, I can pull a woman, right, with my car sitting on bricks. That's how confident <laughs> I. Was. Yeah, that's how confident I, because my thing You're was, confident. well, because here's the thing, the worst thing you could say is no. Mm, wow. No. You, didn't, you didn't take no for an answer. You like, no. No, no, I, I would. I mean, if you say, if you said no and move on, right, I, I would uh -huh. move on, but. It, oh, I, I see. Guys, guys took getting turned down like you just got shot. <laughs> <laughs> Like all she said was no, I mean, and then remember, Doug, that remember that 
you could dance fast, right? You know, a regular a song could come on, whatever. But right. you knew she kind of like you if a slow song came on and she would allow you. So, yeah, because because remember, if 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 I'm dancing, right? If I'm dancing with you and a slow song come on, you like walk me back to my seat. Then okay, see, she's not feeling you she like that. Let you stop, oh <laughs> but if she let you slow, you like okay, I might can get the number before the night over. With, so. <laughs> You know, exactly. you remember things oh. were in stages back then. You know, exactly. you know, exactly. Yes, ain't so like that today. Now. Yeah, exactly. they get to they get to it quick now. <laughs> yeah, they do too quick. I agree with that. I think that's so, cute that you had to wait, and, and the slow dance happened so slow. Yeah, 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 yeah. When uh, my next question is, um, when everything happened with In Vogue, mm -hmm. and you were you were no longer there. Yeah. Um. Uh, what did you learn about yourself uh, going through that process uh, mm, when, 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 when all that kind of, if you want to call it turmoil, when all that took place and then yeah. you said, okay, I'm not, you know, because I'm sure you were being painted at that time because remember, there was no social was. media, right? right? So the only thing we had to go off of is either the radio magazine or something you know it's almost TV. like you did tv you didn't have your own voice and so now you have don being painted like she's either bobby brown david ruffin mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. in those groups so what did you learn about yourself going through that process i learned that i was extremely strong extremely okay. strong okay. and when you walk away or are pushed out of a situation and that situation fails mm -hmm. ooh, that's a lot of power Okay. So in other words, I, I kept thinking, um, well, first I was, of course, I was out of body. I literally was like, oh my God, my life is over. My career right. that I, I have built with these girls, this group, this name, this brand, this likeness that I've built with these girls, they're pushing me out of something that I was a part of, right. that I helped build. Right. What am I going to do now? I'm, not, I'm on my own. And, you know, because I wouldn't play the game the way they wanted me to. It's not fair, right. but okay, I'm out. What do I do now? And I was so, I was just, I was distraught. I probably, I was, I didn't stay in bed or anything like that. Like I wasn't, you know, depressed. I don't get right. depressed, but I was pissed off. I was, I went through a series of emotions. Sure. All these different emotions. And, you know, my family was scared for me. Everybody was like, what is happening? And, and they couldn't fix it for me. They couldn't give me right. advice on how to fix it either. You know, right. so at first I was afraid. And then I was looking at it like when they, that album came out and it didn't do well. I was like, now, now I know my power. Gotcha. Because three, three heads are supposed to be smarter than one. And I'm out on my own. And you guys are acting like I was such a problem. But when I left, that shit fell apart. I feel good. I feel good. You know what I mean? There's no way that you can feel, um, bad about it's like ha 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 i really felt that way like, yeah you guys yeah i mean me your feelings is your feelings yeah yeah you kicked me out for no reason it was wrongful termination and you guys failed that's your karma coming back on you so hell yeah i was i was happy about that have you I noticed was, i wasn't ahead. gloating but i was like of course you didn't succeed you guys did the wrong thing you turned on me for no reason so yeah i was i was very like I said, I went through a series of emotions at first, sure. and then when that album came out, it was like, boo, 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 like Pac-Man. <laughs> it was just- it's, it's amazing. You know what's amazing about what you just said, about mm -hmm. when, it, uh, when the next album came out and it was only three, you know, not four, right? Yeah. If you notice, when groups, what, what groups underestimate, is mm -hmm. that I'm, I'm and I'm I'm not talking about far as you per se, but I'm talking about yeah. like the record label when they put the group, the fans want the package that you introduce. So in other That's words, right. there's a thing called the first principle of mention. The way mm. you started is the way we want it. So exactly. if you notice every group that switch starts switching out members, it it, it starts taking nose dive because they crash the, and burn. Yeah, because the, the fan base is like, nah, that's not. I mean, it, yeah, but you know, that's yeah. We like exactly. we like the look when the way when you came out, and if you yeah. notice, I I think there's only and I, I'm not gonna try to name the band. Maybe what uh, Lionel Richie and Richard, uh, not Richard Brown, but Lionel, Lionel Lionel Richie and Michael Jackson might be the only ones that really like left a group. Mm -hmm. and became bigger than they were when they were with with the group 
No, what there's is, quite a few actually, Otis. There's there's Justin Timberlake from NSYNC. Oh, there's Beyonce. I wasn't thinking about I wasn't thinking about Justin. I wasn't thinking yeah, about Yeah, but there's Beyonce, You're right. Beyonce, there's um Jody Watley was huge in the eighties. I wish that she would have kept going. Yeah, I like Jody. But even then, but Shalimar. even then, but even then, they they we like them better as Shalimar. <laughs> even though Howard Hewitt had a great solo career. I know? wouldn't say that. I mean, it just depends on what you like. You yeah. know what I mean? So I love Shalimar together, but I thought yeah. everybody within a group, it's just like being in a family. Mm -hmm. You may have a, bu a bunch of brothers and sisters, y'all all love sure. each other, but if you don't leave your family and go out and find out what the world is like on your own, you have things yeah. to say that when you're in a big family, you may you not can. be able to do that because, yeah. yeah, your older brother is like, he's doing his <laughs> thing and your older sister, she's doing her thing or the baby yeah. gets all the attention. So you have to find your own voice. And it's no different with a, with a group. Okay. So um, I thought Jody was, to me, when she left Shalimar, she was like a, a, a black Madonna. You know what I mean? She was doing the pop thing and she had crossed over. Of course, we love Shalimar, but you it also, there's only so far you can go within a group creatively. Now, that's true. Our, that's yeah, true. a group yeah. was doing, um, our producers would tell us what to sing and where and how. We didn't have a voice of our own. It's like, okay, I want to write a song about this. No, you're going to sing about this. Well, I have this idea. <laughs> no, you're going to do. Yeah. So it's like that dictatorship is the yeah. problem as well. And then it's got to be voted on. And then. Uh, Not voted on, no. No, no. I'm saying, I'm saying with some groups, you know, they have to. Let's say you have an idea. You're in a group. You have an idea. And your idea probably will work. But if the other members of the group doesn't believe in the idea, then to right. your point, you're going to have to, the only way it's going to come out is you got to go solo. That's the only exactly. way it's going to come out. Yeah, so. we have a voice outside of a group, so you can't stay forever. It's like right. everybody thinks that groups, and even with our parents, it's like, mm -hmm. okay, your parents may have been together when you were kids and they had a lot in common, but when they start growing apart, you can't stop that from happening. And I keep saying that about the group. It's like everybody's like, well, can you just do it for us? Can you do? No, I have to be true to myself. <laughs> you know what I mean? Because Cindy and Terry kind of run the group right now. And they're running in Vogue as if I'm a new member instead of a founding member. And I'm not with that whole shit. Like, I'm just not, I'm no, no, I can't I do you. that. I got yeah. you. I got yeah. you. So when you, so we, after you, like you said, you found your, you found that you were stronger and yes. you're starting to stand in a, uh, standing up for yourself, of course. Exactly. And then yeah. the Lucy Pearl Project came about mm -hmm. how, how did that how did how did that how was that put together well Raphael and I have known each other since we were 16 oh okay uh, he played it yeah he played in my band when we were kids so we were both extremely shy I would turn my back to the audience to sing uh -huh. and the, the audience would be over there and I'm singing over here <laughs> <laughs> I'm facing the band I'm like hey y'all hey how's it going Right. But the, the audience is over here. Uh, yeah, we were just kids. He would sit down in a chair and play bass because he didn't want to stand up. We were just kids. And um, so when he he approached my manager about me doing a group idea that he had, I didn't have a name yet. Okay. But he said, you know, I, we're coming together, uh, Tribe Called Quest with En Vogue, with Tony, 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 to make the super group idea that I have. I was with it 100%. But my manager didn't tell me about it at first. Okay. So she and I had butt heads over and over again. She's the one who created Jade. Her name is Cassandra okay. Mills. Okay. Okay. Strong black woman. I really, really wanted to be managed by her. When she approached me about management, I said yes. But one thing about being strong is she was too. She was a dictator. She had run gotcha. a. She had run a record company before that, Giant Records. So um, she felt like she could run me the same way. And I'm like, oh no, have you met me? <laughs> Come on, like give me you created Jade because of In Vogue. I was part of In Vogue, so give me credit for that at least. She was just right. yeah, we, we butt heads a lot. And then she told me, Yeah, Raphael called me the other day and was like, uh talking about you doing a group that situation, but I know that you're doing solo. So I told him no. And you know, I was like, huh? Wait, huh? What what? <laughs> you're not gonna Come even again? present it to me first. Exactly. <laughs> yes, don't do that. Because I thought. I was nervous about going solo. I didn't want to leave En Vogue in the first place. So this is my, um, it's like a, a, a bridge to becoming solo again. It's leaving En Vogue and not right. going straight out into the solo world because I okay. would have this group to do first. Right. And then from that group, I'll be prepared to go solo. And it was only when I found out from him, uh, I, I don't know how I found him, 
but I called him and I was like, wait a minute. So you called my manager. And she said, no, what is up? Like what's going on with this group idea you have? And he told me, <laughs> and I just thought that is brilliant. Are you kidding me? So we got, we got a hip hop group, Tribe Called Quest. Quest and we got yeah. R and B from Lucy. I mean, from Tony, 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 and then R and B and pop from in Vogue. And we coming together to make this mesh of beauty. Come on. I just thought it was amazing. It was a, I thought it was, it was a great, great Great opportunity. Uh, my thing was, and I'm really upset about myself to this day, but I didn't look mm -hmm. at, I didn't fine tune the contract. I trusted Raphael too much. I took his word for everything. Oh, I got your back. I don't have a lot of money to give you up front. Um, you, because typically when you sign to a major, they give you a huge, well, an advance, not advance. a huge one. Right. Exactly. And I was like, okay, well, I don't need a huge advance anyway, so it's all right. I just trust you and let's do this. I was just having fun. Right. And now that I look back, I'm like, Dawn, you knew better. I'm a businesswoman and I knew better and I didn't do better. So I'm really upset. Well, with we all make we all make mistakes. You we know, do, we, exactly, we, Otis. We, we make mistakes and sometimes yeah. uh, we make them, we, sometimes the, 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 the good choices we make and sometimes you know, we make bad choices. And so right, exactly. that's, what, and that's that why I'm bad. always, well, that's why I'm always <laughs> one that, that is transparent because here's the thing mm -hmm. for people to look at you and say, well, Don, Don you should have known this is that and the other, but are you, were you in her shoes? You know exactly. what I mean? Like, exactly. were you, you because some, right. Because sometimes, you know, that opportunity come along that comes and you were going to, like I say, do a, a, a solo project, right? Mm -hmm. But then that comes along. And that when mm -hmm. it came along, it was also something you were comfortable with as far as being in a group. So then right. you know, hey, I can lean on them. They can lean on me. And sometimes, right. and then you, you've you known Raphael for years. So, yes, exactly. so, so sometimes, that, so yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah. So that's, but, but that's. I, I do, I, I don't regret it because re regret doesn't do anything for you. You learn lessons from what you go through and the things that happen. And you, you do not repeat those things. Otherwise, there you, have you go. Right. So I just wish that I had looked at, I wish that I was the dawn that I still am now. Like I really, instead of just trusting, uh, look at that contract and really fine tune it and make sure that you get what you have to get for yourself. Yeah. So I didn't do that, but um, I had some deals that were on the table, which is why Cassandra was so upset with me because Dawn, I have you with RCA over here. There's a deal on the table for you. Like they want to sign you as a solo artist and right. you're saying no to that. So I called Bob Jamison at RCA and I said, Bob, check it out. I got this deal over here with Raphael Sadiq <laughs> and uh, Ali Shahid Muhammad. And I think it's a brilliant idea. And, you know, it's, it's, it's a way for me to get back out there without having to pay for it or have a label my sure. own label pay for it it's on their dime they're going to be paying for right. all the promotions all the recording of the album all of that and he said no and i said well i'm gonna to have to turn your deal down because i think it's a brilliant idea and you just don't agree so we gotta part ways right. um and i signed with Raphael, and i that's i think the biggest regret for me is that he didn't have my back when I needed him to, because he said he would, and then I signed to him and I turned down this other deal to do that. And then when, when the time comes and the rubber meets the road, as they say, right. and I needed his help, he didn't have my back. Well, see, here's so the thing. that part is really upsetting to me. You know? Well, here's the thing what people don't understand uh, uh, about friendship or about if someone messes you over, right? Mm -hmm. It's only shame on me the second time. That's right. It's That's never right. shame on me the first time because the first, the first time. time we we already had we had history. So I yes. thought X Y Z. Now yes, I, you know you can say well I should have read the contract I should have did it, but you're also you taking account of a a friend friendship. So when you have a yeah. friendship, there's a there's a trust fact. Of course you're not gonna trust somebody you don't know, right? Exactly. So That's yeah, right. so yeah, so I don't I don't That's I don't right. I don't look at you in, in that light and say oh you messed up. It's just like you said, it's Thank a learning you. process. But at the same time, it, and how many people out here out here today are upset with some a, a friend that did something to them that didn't have their back? It's the same thing. The only difference, That's real. Was, yeah. The only difference is you guys had business going on too. So yeah, no, you're absolutely right. Thank you for that because I oh, I no kind of beat myself up about it. Nah, I don't do that. What I well, what I regret is that it was such a brilliant project. 
Yeah. It was so it was so amazing. That album to me, I love In Vogue, don't get me wrong. And I love what we did. I think we were the best at it as far as the 90s were concerned. Um, we were the first on the scene as far as girl, girl groups were concerned. So we opened that door for a lot of other girl groups or, you know, the idea of a girl group. Um, but at the same time, Lucy Pearl to me was a labor of love. It was our creative minds coming together and implementing all of our ideas together yeah. to come up with this beautiful body of work. Like, come on, are you going to really make the wrong decision, Raphael, on not having my back so this, this whole thing falls apart? Like, it makes no sense to me. So when the year was up, I was like, bye. Because, you know, I had lost my house. Um, there was a lot of things that happened in the interim. Sure. But like I said, he told me, you know, I don't mm -hmm. have it to give you up front, but when you need me, I got your back. And when I needed him, he did not have my back. So I ended up losing my house, but I was still on the road and still trying to put a smile on my face. And I had his back. I still had Lucy Pearl's back. I was there for the long haul. I didn't, you wouldn't see me on stage and think, oh my God, she just lost her house. Poor thing. You wouldn't think that. Because I was smiling and, and having fun and looking at Raphael and having a good time anyway. Yeah. Yeah, you did what you had to do because of yeah. you know it, we all get knocked down. It's how you get up, and some yeah, people, but a lot of people would have a lot of people would have gotten knocked down and knocked him out at the same time. Yeah, <laughs> you yeah. don't look, yeah because you're talking about a house, not a person. No, I'm I'm agreeing. No Hello, I'm agreeing with you now. Shoes or a jacket that I left in his car. Yeah. This is my credit that was affected. This is yeah. my still affected to this day. This is my equity that I put in that house. My down payment, all of that is gone. A place to live. So when I went overseas with Lucy Pro for the first time, I literally cried the whole flight. You're talking about 14 hours. Mm -hmm. And when we landed, I was just distraught because I don't have a place to live when I get home. I mean, all of that stuff. There was so much. So it wasn't. You're absolutely right. It's how you get up. It's how you get up. So now, you know, it's taken all these years later, but now I finally have the right team. So I'm going too far ahead of you, but yeah. No, 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 you're, you're right. fine. I, to you I told you, this is the thing I about, th the thing here with interruption, your answer is your answer, and I'm not here to debate your answer. That's all right, no. Because I always tell I people. But I like your points. I like your points, though. So I'm hearing, yeah. I'm hearing you. Yeah. Let, well, let me ask you this. Um, What is the difference, uh, and I hope nobody asked you this question, but they may have, I don't know. That's all right. Uh, but musically, musically, mm -hmm. what is the what was the difference between En Vogue and Lucy Pearl, musically? Good question. Nobody's asked me that. Bravo. <laughs> um, the difference with the music, wow. So En Vogue had two producers that were extremely um, creative. Mm -hmm. They were really geniuses because their sound, I would think, I think it's still believed to this day, it was custom made for En Vogue. Okay. They tried to work with other people. Um, Regina Bell, I think, listened to their tracks. Um, I think Madonna actually listened to their stuff and it really didn't, it wasn't a match. You know okay. what I mean? It was, it was about En Vogue and our voices matching their songs and their, sure. their tracks. Yeah, I mean, sure. so it was a genius meeting of the minds with all of us. Mm -hmm. Whereas Lucy Pearl was all of us in the studio creating that sound together ourselves. Gotcha. Raphael, literally, we had these other two producers that I was working with before Raphael came to me with for Lucy Pearl. Mm -hmm. um, Glenn and Bobby, their names are, and uh, Jake and the Fat Man was their production name. So a white okay. guy and a Mexican guy. Kids, oh, wow. they were just kids. Yeah, exactly. They're the ones who create that sound of Lucy Pearl. I got to give them more credit than Ali and Raphael put together. Those oh, wow. guys, literally, um, the first time we heard about the meters, the meters were a bunch of musicians coming together. Mm -hmm. I want to say Stax, the Detroit Sound, James Brown's musicians, all of these musicians would just have jam sessions and they would just play. Right, right. They would play, the, you know, the drama would be there, whoever, and they would have all these tracks that they would create. And they have what they call, um, they were just beat tracks. So there, it, it's on wax. You can literally, it's an album of um, beats by the meters. Okay. And the meters were just a bunch of musicians, like I said, they came together to create just, they would just jam together, and just create music. Um, my producers, Glenn and Bobby, J Jake and the Fat Man came and they said, well, we're gonna use the meters 
as uh, the base of those tracks. So if they were starting La 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 or Every Day on the album mm -hmm. or, or Dance Tonight or Don't Mess With My Man, uh -huh. um, they would start playing those meters um, bass lines. I'm sorry, those meters beats. And we, if we liked one of the beats, Raphael would say, I like that. Go back, play that again. They would play it and he would start playing bass line to it. He would play like 12 bass lines to one particular track over and over and over again. He would play all these different uh, bass lines. And then the next day we would come in, mm -hmm. Jake and the Fat Man would have uh, an idea for a track, which became, like I said, every day, or I can't stand your mother, or um, remember the time, you know, all of these different songs, good love, really, really creative with that album. So that is the difference with, with I was in on the music part of Lucy Pearl. Right. Whereas Denny and Tommy would create the tracks and we come to the studio and we would just sing what they tell us. Okay. You know what I mean? For okay. for En Vogue, yeah, we wouldn't know who's going to sing lead on what song on any particular day. They'd just say, okay. So, uh, go ahead. I forgot what I was saying. <laughs> no, no, you were just you just explained uh, the difference. Between the music, yes, and, exactly. Yeah, so, I wasn't, we were not, and Vogue was not included in the process of the music. And that's what I loved about Lucy Pearl. We literally created all of that together. The look, the sound, the likeness of Lucy Pearl was all of us creatively coming together. Okay. Whereas Denny and Tommy dictated the music and we weren't a part of that process. So, gotcha. and it's okay. You know, we were learning as we went along as well. So I just love that Lucy Pearl was a totally different type of process in the studio. It was fun. Well, that's uh, that, I'm glad that you were able to explain that uh, to me because I know that there was a different because the sound was different uh, with, with Lucy Pearl than than, than uh, in Vogue. So I just wanted you to be able to explain the difference. Sure. Um, yeah. What what artists or group today that you listen to or that you that that you you like? Oh my goodness. Oof. I mean, I love the the weekend. I loved his first track. I thought it was great. Um, okay. And I do like Bruno Mars. I love the fact oh, that I he gives credit, credit where it's due because he's a he's a badass. But he takes a lot of it from James. You can hear James Brown yes. all in his music. Yes. Parliament, Parliament, all in his music. Yes. Uh, um. There's not, I, I hate to say it, but I like their songs. I just don't know who they are that are singing the songs. Okay. Uh, I think Jessie J is amazing. I think vocally, she's a beast. She's amazing. Okay. Um, a lot of times it's kind of weird because it's, I think every era has different types of singers. Sure. So back, back when Ella Fitzgerald and Sarah Vaughn were singing, it, it, it jazz, I, I guess it was standards. Um, singers had a different type of voice. Their vibrato was different. It was very fast. Yeah. Um, but Billie Holiday didn't really have that. So I can't say that, that all singers back then had that. But um, today, it just seems like they do a lot of runs, a lot of ad-libbing in songs. Yeah. And so the Tori Kellys of the world, although she's amazing, she does a little too much to me. Mm -hmm. Ariana Grande is amazing too, but she does a little too much. So... I love their stuff. I just can't invest in it, in other words, because I, mm -hmm. I know they're singles. I think they're dope. Like I said, they're amazing. But yeah, I, I don't I love, know. No, I love Bruno because, uh, like you said, you uh, James Brown. But I, I'll tell you why I love Bruno. Mm -hmm. is I've heard him sing a cappella. Uh -huh. so I love a person that actually can sing. Like yeah, yeah. <laughs> when you cut the music exactly. off. And, and it's like, ooh, that boy, that boy. So for me to see him do that and then you put the music behind it okay now i can enjoy the production because i know you actually can sing yeah but you know i would always say because a lot of people get upset oh you know mm. janet jackson and sing live on stage i'm like well but she wasn't supposed to she gave you a show yeah she's not yeah. supposed to stand up there and be, she's not trying to be shaka khan so sometimes right. she's not going to sing everything live and even today beyonce doesn't sing everything live well, when I you're a performer, like, oh, when you're a performer, on, as you know, go ahead. 
I'm sorry. I just want to finish. No, I just no, learned recently from Joyce Irby uh -huh. uh, from Climax. She was telling me, she said, okay. Dawn, a lot of these singers today don't sing live because you got to do a lot of dancing. You don't want to tax your voice because you got to show the next day and the next day right, and the next day. Right. I was like, are you kidding me? So when we were on tour, I was singing everything live and every single show, I'd be hoarse the next day. So you don't have full range of your voice. So I'm like, okay, I'm going to use that crutch as well sometimes. Depending on the part of the song, she said she has certain things that she, when she's doing I Miss You, I miss you. Right. She doesn't always have her full voice. She said there's certain parts that she records that she wants those notes to be there. Right. So you lean on that because that's what being professional is. I was like, I wish somebody would have told us. Wow. Because we sing everything live. Yes. And everybody would be hoarse the next day, especially me. Uh, I think my breathing is always off. Mm -hmm. And so believe it or not, I'm still trying to learn how to breathe okay. for singing. And I get to the end of my phrase and I still don't have any breath and I'm still trying to sing the next phrase. That's not good. You're singing on a deficit. So I can't explain it. I'm sorry to, to, to give no, it to No, 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 no. I, I sang in the church. No, I'm not a singer now. But I sang in the okay. church, church choir and the the, yeah. the, 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 the the guy that was over the choir was a, 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 a he majored in music at Morehouse. So mm -hmm. we, we learned breathing technique. We learned my, my little brother from uh, Jagged Edge, Richard Wingo was in that choir. So we learned a lot of stuff musically that yes. you probably wouldn't learn if someone hadn't majored in music, right, you know, at right. that time. So I know Good exactly, I know, I know exactly what you're, you know, what you're talking about. So, yeah. So everybody's different. Everybody's, you know, Aaliyah didn't have the most powerful voice, but what she did with it was amazing to me. Sweet, beautiful. Exactly. Uh, and so was, um, so was Janet. I love Janet on certain things, oh, I love but Janet. when, when you walk away from Janet's show, your my point to that person was like, mm -hmm. she didn't have to stand there and sing note for note for note. She gave you a show, and you weren't you entertained? And they're like, "Oh my God, yeah, okay, well that's what she yeah, did her that's job." That's all you. That's all, right. That's all you need. <laughs> exactly. She, she did her job. Yeah, and nobody yeah. does it like Janet. Nobody Please. does it like nobody. Janet. <laughs> that, you talked how... about. I saw in several uh, interviews you've done, and so uh -huh. I just wanted to ask this question. You had talked about uh, being in a uh, abusive relationship, uh -huh. and what my question for you uh was how did you get out of that relationship what how did you what was the kind of some of the steps you took not to be mm. because from a a, a fan base a, a yes. person a fan and a fan of yours and, and and everything that you've done you know guys mm -hmm. that are fan you know we take that to heart like what you just Way at now, you know, we're like, way at now, because we'll, we're, hey, we'll show him what abuse is, you know. Exactly. That, that type. So, what did you do? How did you, you know, get through it? Well, anytime a man abuses a woman, you know he's a coward anyway. So, he would probably run from you if he saw you in person anyway, most likely. Um, yeah, I, I can't even say who I was while I was in that relationship. It's funny because hmm. you don't. You hear about women doing that. And I would always say growing up, I watched my mom go through that stuff. I'm like, I will never let a man put his hands on me, blah, blah, blah. But I guess because I was married, I felt like I had to stay in that relationship. Mm -hmm. um, I kept wanting it to work because you love the person that you're with, even though they're abusing you. That's sick as well. Um, I also didn't want to be a statistic. I didn't want to be a, a statistic. I didn't want black people barely get married let alone stay married and mm -hmm. i did not want to be a statistic i wanted to make it work um and so i thought oh if i love him enough or if he just sees the air of his ways he will understand and i found myself in an abusive relationship it was unbelievable the way that i got out of it it, it i've heard other women say the same thing it always ends on something so small okay it's not like he had had, you know, he had gotten like three other women pregnant while we were together and had babies outside of our marriage while we were still married. But that's not what broke us up. He putting his hands on me. That's not what broke us up. Wow. Uh, I was had my godmother was coming to visit me and him because we lived together. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, we had a beautiful place by the beach in Los Angeles. Okay. Um, and it was by LAX as well. So the flight pattern literally went over our building all the time. We had a beautiful condo. Okay. And we were renting. I was paying the rent every month. He wasn't chipping in anything. And I asked him to help me. I was polyurethaning the floors. 
because they were hardwood floors in, in our place. Okay. And I literally had to, like he would sit on the couch every day and watch me clean this place up and getting it ready for my godmother. She was coming from Connecticut to visit. And I wanted the place to be amazing when she got there. So I literally found polyurethane at the Home Depot. I got the tools. I did everything. And he sat on the couch and watched me clean this place from front to back. And didn't lend a hand. Didn't help me with the floors. Literally, when I poly, I said, can you just go in the kitchen and get online? Because I'm doing the floors here and I can't work around you. Oh, okay. And he got up and he went in the kitchen and he worked in the kitchen online. Okay. Well, I did the floors on my hands and knees because I didn't know how to. Now I know that you use a squeegee and you can use like this mop thing and you can poly mm -hmm. everything in your floors with this wax stuff. And it, they're beautiful, shiny, gorgeous floors. He didn't help me at all. I left the house that day and I had on the fan. And I, before I left the house, I said to him, when I leave here, when I come back, I want you gone. I want, I want you out of here. Um, actually, no, I'm so sorry. I said to him, I wanted him to help me shake out a rug. I had a, um, a sheepskin rug and it was okay. heavy. Okay. It was like dead weight. And so I had to okay. pick it up and, and to, in order to put it over the banister, because we had a uh, patio. Mm -hmm. And over the patio, you can look out over the lagoon. So I couldn't lift it over the uh, banister to shake it out. If I okay. shook it, it was going to fall out of my hands. It was that heavy. Okay. And I asked him to help me with it, and he would not. So I, I hung it over the banister, and I just took uh, my, um, what do you call it, my... Um, my broom and I was just hitting it out so that it would shake okay. as much as I could. Right. And I, when I left, I left it hanging over the banister. I, the floors were, were dry by then. And I walked out and I said, when I leave here, when I come back, I want you gone. And he was still downstairs in the kitchen and he said, okay. And that was it. It was not a big, like, oh my God, we had the biggest fight in the world. Right, he was right. in jail. Nope. Right. It wasn't nothing like that. It was just, he wouldn't help me with the carpet. But it was the principal. I had asked him for help the whole time. He knew she was coming to town. The next day she was coming in. Right. And you're not going to help me clean this place at all. We both live here. You're not going to clean a bathroom or vacuum a floor. Like nothing. Okay. And I'm paying the rent every month. Oh, yeah. You got to go. You know? Yeah, that was just a tipping. That was just a tipping point. You know. The tipping point is you just know, something have... small, though. It's yeah. So funny. Well, you know they they say that they say you know when you when you break up, whether boyfriend, yeah. girlfriend, marriage, or whatever, right? Right. It's never the the last thing that you're arguing about. That's just exactly. the tipping point. Like Got you just it. had enough. You know, you could have right. you could have he could have cooked you breakfast and you could have looked at him didn't like the way he cooked the breakfast exactly. and you like you know what i can't do this no more i can't do this anymore. exactly you gotta i don't go. even i don't even like when the way was, you breathe he was being he was being vindictive and i knew that because i had been cleaning the whole week prior and that was what was like you are so freaking lazy and you're not helping me pay rent you have to go it's time right now when i get back be out um and i threw most of his clothes in the hallway um so yeah i was like yeah he and so he was gone after that that was it for me and and i i had to get he tried to get a divorce with me at a certain point i got the paperwork done i went and got everything notarized um i sent it off right then at the notary i had them ship it you know send him mm -hmm. um where he had to sign for the paperwork that he received right. everything uh and he said he was going to send me the finalized paperwork that next week or whenever he gets them and he never sent them so, and that was in 2010 or 11, maybe. And just last year, or I'm sorry, three years ago, sorry, three years ago, I said to him, you never sent me the paperwork. Did you get everything? And he said, well, I thought I sent it. So I said, I, I called the family court. Mm -hmm. I find out that uh, we're not actually divorced. He never finalized anything. Because oh, every now and then- <laughs> yeah, exactly. Every, every now and then he was like, um, okay, well, Miss, um, he would send me an email and say, Miss Allen. I'm like, I'm not Miss Allen anymore, Dre. I'm no longer at John, you know, Dawn Robinson right. Allen. I am Dawn Robinson. He's like, no, you're still married to me. And I finally said, okay, let me find out if that's true or not. So I called family court and I said, oh, yeah, you're still married. So I asked him to finalize everything. And he said, F you, get it done on your own. Oh, so you think I can't do it by myself? You think, oh, you think I need your signature to make a divorce happen? 
You no. can get a divorce by default. Yes. yes. I found yes. that out. Yes. I found that out. So he didn't want to comply. He didn't want to work through this with me. Mind you, he already had two other marriages after me. Wow. So he got married, even though to them, while he was still married to me. That's illegal. <laughs> That's Yeah, polygamy, exactly. Yes. But their marriages were null and void because he was still married to me legally. Right. So we were still married. So I'm the one who had to actually pay and get a divorce. So I got it all done, went to the courthouse. I sent him his information and told him we are done. Well, how did you do that? Yeah, we're done. Don't worry, don't worry about, about that. Yeah, don't worry about that. Don't worry about yeah, that. Just know you, it's done. Don't worry about that. You asking too many questions. <laughs> you know who I am. You know who I am, and I'm efficient. Yes. And so I got it done on my own. I didn't need your help. Yes. Yeah. Well, my last yeah, two okay. my last two questions for you uh -huh. um, is the first one of the last two questions is, uh -huh. how did you survive the entertainment business? Woo! D Otis! Ah! You got some great questions. Oh my gosh. How did I survive? First of all, I am a black woman. And I say that with all, I love my white friends. I have lots of white friends I grew up in high school with. Um, Betsy is one of my best friends from high school. She's white. When it comes to survival, what black women make it happen. You know what yeah. I mean? And I really believe I was protected. I had, I had angels around me. I still do. And we're all given angels. I, I really believe that we all have protection. Yeah. Um, and so I, I asked God to just get me through that. It was really about, like I said, first it was depression mm -hmm. or not depression, but sadness. And right. oh my God, they're going on without me. And then it was pissed off because they're going on without me. And I helped build right. that name in Vogue. Are you kidding? They're going on without me. And then it was like, ha, 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 you can't go on without me. And then it was like, okay, I got Lucy Pearl. That was also right. a genius project that I was a part of. Um, I look to my inner strength and I look to God because a lot of times we go outside of ourselves and you got to go to church and talk to the pastor or you got to go and get therapy. And I have had therapy, especially after my marriage. Mm -hmm. Not because I thought I was going crazy or anything like that, but because... I wanted to know why I was attracted to an abusive man. Gotcha. He was extremely narcissistic and I had never dated anyone like him before. I just wanted to know why I was even attracted to someone like that in the first place. I knew I, better. I knew I better. Get I get yeah, it. Yeah. So I wanted to know what the hell that was so that I don't repeat, you know, those, those steps the, again. Right. Um, right. That's yeah. But. You. Yeah, I, I just found that power within myself. There's a song by Whitney Houston, I didn't know my own strength. I did not know how strong I was until, okay, so now I left in Vogue and that fell apart. I left Lucy Pearl and that fell apart. Mm -hmm. I'm the shit, like I'm, I'm amazing. Yeah. They knew that I was amazing. I did not see my own power within that group. Or, and I always tried to play small because I was the youngest one in the group. And I was intimidated by them because they had done so much more in their lives. Like when we met, Terry was in college. She was little, literally at college. She was in Prairie View, going to college at Prairie okay. University. Um, Cindy, like I said, was a child star and she had traveled the world. She was Miss Oakland. She ran for Miss California. She was a pageant queen, an actress. You know, she had done all this right. great stuff. And I, and Maxine was a local great. She had done all these shows in the Bay Area. So I just felt like, she was living on her own when, when we met at the audition and I was like, oh my gosh, I'm not, I haven't done anything with my life. But the thing is, is that I had more than I knew. They saw my greatness. I didn't see it until later. I see it now. I know who I am now. I know my worth now, but they saw it way before I did, way before I did. So now that I know my power, you take that power and you take your knowledge and you take all the hardships and all of that pain right. and you turn it into something amazing, extraordinary. You know what yes. I mean? I always tell people be extraordinary because we are. Um, so yeah, that's how I survived knowing my strength and figuring it out for myself and seeing what they saw way before I did, you know, now I see it. That's all right. It, a lot of times, you know, we, we, we don't know what's inside and sometimes the hardship comes along to pull out what's exactly. inside. Exactly. Yeah. 
Yeah, that's, so. I think if we, some people use that hardship and they go the other direction and they end up drinking themselves to death or drugging themselves to death or eating themselves to death. It's like, you can't use those downfalls um, against yourself. Correct. You pick your, yeah, you, you don't lay there when your re relationship is over or it failed and say, oh my gosh, my marriage has ended. He, he found someone else or she found someone else. You say, okay. It hurts. I'm going to cry through this. I'm going to get through this and I'm going to be better because of it. That's the difference. You either use it to uh, allow it to uh, beat you down or you use it to build yourself up. And that's what well, I did. You know, it's like when you work it out, you know, anytime you work out, what's the first thing they tell you? No pain. Pain. That's no right. Gain. No gain. That's right. No pain, no gain. So we, I think sometimes we forget that in life. We look at the pain yeah. Oh, it's about to destroy us. And the pain sometimes really is there to make you. We just exactly. have to see That's that. That's right, Otis. Yeah. So you segue yeah. into my final question. Oh, good. Which, okay. is, which is everything you've been through from the mm -hmm. group, uh, or the both groups, the marriage, you know, just different things that you've been through, you know, in your life and yes. people reading different things about you and all this. Who is Don Robinson? Oh, my God. <laughs> That can't be summarized. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Ooh, who is Dawn Robinson? Dawn Robinson is powerful. Gotcha. Dawn Robinson is strong. Dawn Robinson is a fighter. She's courageous. All I right. am, yeah, I am um, relentless, determined. I am a fire starter. I am um, a rebel. I don't just go along to get along. I will never do that. Even with the government and all this stuff about COVID and all this crap. Um, I just don't. I have a mind of my own and I think outside the box. A lot of times going that road is lonely because mm. a lot of people don't think like me. So it's hard to have those conversations. I think Dave Chappelle put it best. He said, being living outside the box and thinking outside of what everyone else thinks like is a hard place to be because you have to dummy your conversations down sometimes. And he wasn't yeah. saying it to be arrogant. He was just saying, sometimes I see things that other people don't see. And I look at life differently. I don't follow. I call people sheeple because they all just obey without questioning why all these things are happening. And so I'm like, I, people are pissed at me. They're like, okay, you love Donald Trump. No, I don't love Donald Trump, but I know that blind in, I call them chump and blind in. Are, are, uh, yeah, blinded. I don't call him Biden. I call him blinded because people are blind and they just think, oh, we have Kamala Harris. Yeah, but you have Kamala Harris who put a lot of black men away and put them in prison for the three strike situation. You know, little stuff that they did. They didn't treat white men the same way that black men got treated from her. That's what I don't like. Um, and so she wasn't fair. Um, if you're going to treat black men that way, you got to do the same with white men for the same, the same, um, misdemeanors or whatever they did right, that I they, get it. felonies or whatever happened right. with them you got to be fair come on right. so i love that we have a black woman but i want it to be the white right black woman um not just anybody because she's the one who's going to do the things that they need she's the puppet so yeah they get pissed at me but i'm like so what i i live how i live i am not saying that i want chump in office not at all i get what he was you're an saying asshole. i but get i like I know the fact saying. that I like the fact that he was not a typical president in the sense that he said from the beginning, I'm not going to talk to you politically. I don't talk like that because to me, all that political jargon is bullshit. It's, and it just is. It's like lower taxes, higher wages. Well, how many times are you going to say that same thing and not actually do what you say? They get in office once they promise those things and they don't actually comply with what they say. Well, you know, do. the young, uh, and I'm sure you saw it, the, the, the young rapper, uh, Yellow Pain, had to no. remind okay so if you no. if you if you go look at uh yellow pain when the whole election was getting ready to take place yeah he, he did a rap and he had to remind us all what we learned in school so you have three uh government uh three levels of government you you know uh -huh. you, you have executive you know you have legislature and you have judicial and a lot right. of times what we're looking for the, the uh, the legis I mean, not legis Legis the, the executive to do, which is the president, right. is actually what legislates do, because exactly. it's the Senate in the House that writes the laws, but we're looking for the president to write the laws. So what happens is, is when 
when like remember when obama got in right and mm -hmm. everybody was happy and excited and it was like after you know it's like but well, what did he do well we forgot in his rap he wrote in that we forgot to go back to the polls but two years later but this is the thing though <laughs> otis what i what i was upset about and i still say to this day and people are like oh mm -hmm. i love my obama i love mm -hmm. him too it was a black man in office he looked like us i love that yes. oh that was yes. wonderful however he gave the gays, the H LGBT, he gave them, they, he passed laws for them. He passed laws for the Jews. He did something big for the Jews. I forget what that was, but the, at the lower, at the lower levels, the least that he could have done, which is, I've seen President Trump change laws and do executive moves. Like I'm gonna, I'm gonna veto the Senate. I'm gonna veto the house because I'm gonna override you guys. Cause I'm the motherfucking president. And I'm going to do this because I want certain things to be passed. So even though you guys said this and the Senate said that and the Congress said this, I'm going to do what I want. And he would, um, what do you call it? He would take a presidential stance. I don't know for any other way to put it, but he would do stuff. And like you said, a veto, a veto. Yeah, he would pass laws, even though they said, no, we don't agree with you. He would do stuff anyway, executive order. That's what he would do. But see, the trick, so, what, the trick that the I learned. The thing is, is that Obama could have done the same thing as a black man because he was the only one that would be willing to do that. On Obama's watch, mm. Trayvon Martin, Michael Brown, what's the other guy who got choked out on the street? And I can't breathe. I mean, so many black yeah, men were killed on his watch, too. Yeah. So the only person that would have seen to it that we got to get the Senate to change the laws and make sure that not just local laws are changed, but mm. at the top, these things are changed and they will never be reversed. Was Obama that would care enough to say, my people are gonna win? Because we'll probably never see it in my lifetime, I'll probably never see a black, another uh, black person at the top like that. And we had Blinden, how long was he in office? He's been in politics hey. for 52 years. Oh, you're talking about, oh, oh, I thought you were talking about, go ahead. Blinden go has been in, in office for 52, in, in politics for 52 years and had done, he said, it, with his own words, because I was like, okay, is, is it just they're putting words in his mouth? But he's sitting there saying, he's talking to Congress saying, we have to get these people off the street. These kids, these these uh, almost like calling us um, these young black boys who are thugs and all that mm -hmm. stuff. He said the same exact thing that everybody gets upset with Trump about, Trump about. Um, he said, I don't want my kids going to school in a jungle. A jungle because they were trying to reform, um, bring white kids and black kids into the better schools. So in the oh, suburbs, the kids were coming in right, being busted right, in. Right. He's like, I don't want my kids going to a school in the jungle. So we have to keep these kids out, these thugs out. We got, I am not saying there is no, I guess what it is is that God is trying to tell us all as a human race human beings in general, because mm -hmm. black people, white people are just as they get messed up with, and politics don't change things unless you are a certain level. Mm -hmm. Politics don't work for the middle class. It, it works for the upper class. Correct. It does not work for the lower class and people that are, are struggling every day to make ends meet. Um, and it doesn't really work for the middle class either. So I'm like, Correct. okay, you guys, we got to. The only time government has ever made changes is when the people came together. When women said that they wanted to vote into hell with men, we're going to vote. I think it was. I forget the name of the women that came together. It was a movement that they had. Yeah, yeah. But even, mm -hmm. but even then, Otis, even then, we as black women didn't women didn't get to vote until three or four years after that. Right. Are you kidding me? But the only time government changes is when people stand up and say, "Enough, we're done, we're done." Vietnam War. The kids were like, "We're not going to Vietnam. We don't believe in Nixon. We don't believe in well, this I think, war." Well, I think just what you said that I think what we have to do as 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 a, as a country as people period especially yes. as african americans we especially. have to understand that we have to keep pushing the needle forward so yes like, i think sometimes what we do is we get excited with the one mm -hmm. thing and then we don't look to push forward past that exactly. so so yeah. then when that like you said okay okay we get obama boom we good right and so then we don't push the needle forward right mm -hmm. so then we get we get with with Trump, and so mm -hmm. then it takes that to light a fire with more, uh, uh, unfortunately, more and more black men and women exactly. being killed and murdered. And then what we have to understand now is like, okay, so you have a new regime, and we still mm -hmm. have to keep pushing 
the needle forward so that exactly but whoever... this is the thing though mm -hmm. this is what's hard because i hear a mm -hmm. lot of stuff as a celebrity i hear stuff behind the scenes that the average person doesn't know mm -hmm. and a lot of times they're like okay Trump is out here doing this stuff, but it's really that they're trying to make sure that he doesn't stay in office because he knows the dirt that Correct. goes on behind the scenes that he's trying to clean. He's trying to clean up all this bullshit. So there's so much stuff that has happened with black people. Supposedly, this is what I'm I'm frustrated about. Mm -hmm. Someone has on their page all of these great things that he's done for black people. Mm -hmm. And they're like, Trump, and, and their heading is Trump is a racist, but look what he's done for black people. He got this person out of, he pardoned this person. Mm -hmm. But we don't we don't hear it on, on NBC or CNN. We don't hear it on mainstream news because they don't want him in because he has a different agenda. He actually does like black people. They're saying, I don't see again. That's what I mean. I'm like, Father, I always pray that God gives me clarity. I want transparency because I don't know. I, I hear the stuff that they say he says. Here's, here's the but key really, thing. This is the thing, too. Hold on. I was on a reality show and they put words uh -huh. in my mouth. Uh-huh. So I know that they're capable of putting words in his mouth and people like Hillary Clinton, people like Obama and Michelle don't want the truth to come out. And so they run the news. Hillary Clinton runs a lot of the news stations too. So her and Bill Gates and Warren Buffett and all these people that run their agenda don't want the truth to come out. So I'm like, okay, wait a minute, is, is a father. And this is, I can only go to God because no human being knows the truth. Mm -hmm. And that's that's no that's that's why I was getting ready to go with it was is that if if everyone would take the the time to seek the face of God because God even said that my people which are called by name you know name, exactly. that would seek my face you know turn from their so, wicked so, ways you know exactly. what I'm, I'm just paraphrasing turn around then exactly. they they can hear hear from heaven but yeah. nobody but watch this. But we can't, you know why people can't do that? Because guess what? We all don't worship the same God either, and I do. Well, not only that, the agenda for the planet has always been, the, the, the powers that be, the elite, has mm -hmm. always been to destroy. They want as many souls as they, as they can get. Correct. They don't care about taking care Correct. of us and making sure we have enough Correct. food and that we care for each other as, as a whole, as a planet. They don't want us coming together as people. They want uh, Black people to hate the police. So a lot of times when we even see... They were catching a lot of the Black Lives Matter people. They were making it seem like they were the ones busting out windows and all that stuff. And it, was, it wasn't it was even Black Lives Matter. It was Democrats that were doing a lot of that damage. And I'm just like, okay, Father, what is this shit about? Like, come on, this cannot happen. Because we're never going to see it at the light of day. And we're never going to see each other's point of view if we have people out there with a hidden agenda that are trying to do damage. Correct. And that's and why we're all trying to get it. us. Right. Yeah, and we're all trying to... They're all they're trying to get us to do this vaccine that has nanotechnology in it. I'm like, okay, God. I ain't taking no vaccine. <laughs> this uh, <laughs> <laughs> take that. I'm here to tell you right now. I ain't taking no vaccine. I'm here to tell you. I try to tell my parents, but they're so we are so literally when you watch TV, how many times when you were a kid did you hear your grandmother say, Well, my program is on? It's programmed. Because they program us. Thank you. And I'm listening to this stuff, and I'm like, Father, this is a lot of rhetoric. It's called I'm television. Living my, I'm living with my parents right now, and all they do is listen. Well, the news said, and on the news tonight they said, and I'm like, Mom, can you guys please wake up and think for yourselves? Please just step outside of what the news programs and conditions you to believe. Is it possible that something else is hidden behind that? Do you think that if this man was really as dirty as they say, they would have gotten, they would have had Trump out a long time ago if they really thought that he was as bad as what they show us he's supposed to be? Sure. But they know that they can't move him out like that because he wasn't doing all the things that they said. They just want to taint the world against him That's or it. really America because we're the ones who say if he can be or not be in an office. So now yeah. everybody hates him because of what they planted. But I think it's going to be worse with, with uh, Blinden. Like I said, he was, we had Blinden in office as a, as a vice president for eight years with a black man and he did nothing for us. Come on, y'all. I'm it's, worn out. That's all right. Well, well, you know, I don't want to hold you anymore. <laughs> but <laughs> I told you, and I promised you, it was going to be a different conversation. <laughs> yes, you did. You did. You got me heated. Got me heated. <laughs> <laughs> but I want you to stay oh, relentless, you. stay exquisite, stay beautiful, stay progressive, mm. stay thank being you. 
Don Robinson. And we'll love oh to have God. you back on the show at another time. But I thank you too. for blessing us with your presence. And thank we love you. you. Stay oh, blessed. love you too. Thank you. Take care of yourself. We'll talk soon Peace. after All my right. record's out. Take care.